Welcome, everyone. Friends, clients, Echo Team supporters, many of you I know have come from far. So hopefully lots of teas and coffees to help with any jet lags, but delighted that you're all here this afternoon with us. I hope you enjoy the rich discussion ahead and our ecosystem, I think, of inspiring speakers and equally inspiring guests. So hopefully you'll have a chance to meet each other over breaks and certainly at the end of the afternoon. As a global research company helping clients aim for better, ECHO is really proud of our tradition of hosting this annual summit every year on topics that we find we're talking to with our clients uh, and with our network. And certainly populism, capitalism, activism, all sorts of isms are very much in the news and of the moment. So we felt this was a really good time to start to bring it together and look at it from various different perspectives. And it's also no coincidence that we're here, for those of you who were with us last year, we're here again at Prince Philip House, home to the Royal Academy of Engineering. And featuring, some of you may have noticed in the, uh, in the tea room, equations that changed the world. As we gather to talk about re-engineering our future for a better tomorrow. Certainly, the business community and society are facing together unprecedented challenges um, and upheavals, which we'll touch on really in our all too brief afternoon together. And um, as always with these summits, we always hope that there will be two or three things that each one of you can take away with you at the end of the afternoon. So we're very much here to consider the palpable rise of populism, fed by fears and frustrations over inequality disadvantage, mistrust of elites, and their seeming lack of action on the things that matter. And at the same time, the questions around capitalism and our faith in capitalism, seeming as it is baked in mistakes, misuse, and seeming misalignment with society's goals. Even Jamie Dimon, Chairman and CEO of JP Morgan, and obviously Chairman of the Business Roundtable, uh, many of you will have seen in the news. And he talked about the new statement on purpose of a corporation. And he said, the dream is alive, but it's fraying. <coughs> so let's look at this a little more closely. Just by way of scene setting, and I'm not going to stand much between you and uh, our very impressive speakers, the ECHO team wanted to look at the context of where we are now, what are the drivers of perception, the impact on our attitudes and behaviors, and actually where this is leading to in terms of outcomes, and do we really trust business, and do we see business as a force for good or not? And I think it's important, as always with these things, is to look at these things through more than one lens. So, by way of context, a lot of you will have seen this, rising marches, not just in this country and in the US, France, and elsewhere. Um, the millennial calls on change and socialism. Um, capitalists, unlikely heroes. The rich versus the rest. And even one of the, not the latest issue, but the issue before the, the latest issue is actually what are companies actually for? A lot of questions, a lot of issues, a lot of things coming to the light. And what we see, when we just looked at the media, and this is looking at the mainstream media in the US and in the UK, um, over the last five years, there's been a 43% increase in attention on capitalism. And it isn't good attention. It really is calling into question, what is capitalism actually doing? Has this been the right vehicle for us? Are there others? And against that, too, we see a 66% rise in calls for activism and comments around activism and active engagement, if you like. And the interesting thing is, and perhaps not surprisingly, when you look at the social media, and this is literally one month alone, over 300,000 social media posts talking about activism in some shape or form. Now, 80% of that is from those under 35. So there is a lot to be said out there. There's a lot being talked about out there. And there's a lot that's fermenting and driving perceptions and attitudes. What we also see, and this isn't the whole story, 
but we also see a rise in negative comment about the role of business. Now, I'll come on to this, because this isn't, as I say, it's, it's just looking at it from this particular angle. The conversations that are coming through, and this is from our blog posts in August, Extinction Rebellion, Disadvantage Change, issues around um, everything from uh, socialism, Trump, uh, generation divides, and so it goes. All these things that are seeming to be obstacles to better lives for those calling for it. Again, highlighting inequalities, highlighting where they're seeming disadvantages, not being properly addressed. Climate change. So when we look at that, I think what was really interesting is we did a poll in the US and in the UK and said, who has actually taken part recently in any kind of protest, any kind of um, uh, writing letters to business, to government, um, signing petitions, and actually generally being active. And we found over half the adult population in both the US and the UK have claimed to have some kind of um, involvement in being active, in protesting, in mobilizing, in expressing their voice, in expressing their discontent. It's not all negative. It's not all violent, obviously, and hopefully it won't be. But there is certainly a move out there. Ask the audience who's gone. Sorry? Ask the audience who's gone. Ask the audience? Yeah. About? Ah, yes, OK. From our, our audience here, have any of you written, objected, taken part, signed petitions? Oh, more than half. Our entire audience. Good question. Thanks, Kai. Yeah, and actually, and you're not even the 18 to 34-year-olds, but yes, they're nearly 70% of them do as well. So yes. So we can see impact on behavior, yeah, and on attitudes and perceptions. And we also see, in our work for Britain's Most Admired Companies, we've polled the uh, listed directors of the Fortune 250, and 67% said that they're worried about this rise in activism, these demands for change. One of the questions we asked is, well, is capitalism in crisis? Or is it in need of a tweak? Um, or is it fine just as it is? And here what's fascinating is that there are slight differences between the US and the UK, uh, which you can see. But by and large, business says, yeah, we think there's a problem in Nassau, but um, small changes will, will get us there. When you look at the general public, however, there is a disconnect. Yeah? Nearly a third say capitalism is in crisis and are calling for that kind of change. And it's that kind of disconnect that is leading to the issues that we've seen in the Edelman Trust Barometer and all the other trust studies that we've seen about the lack of business, the lack of trust in business. And if we flip this the other way around, um, you could say, well, actually, 60 to 70% do not trust government or big business. 60 to 70% do not trust government or big business. Now, one might say that's not surprising, particularly on the government side, but that is where it is. What is more interesting, though, is actually about half say, I trust my employer. Amazon may say differently right now. Uh, with their planned walkout on the 20th of September. But by and large, most people are willing to give their employers the benefit of the doubt and will say our employer is good, and we do see them as a force for good. What is interesting is actually the high scores given to small businesses, the small, local, family-run business. We trust. We trust them to do well. We trust them to be nimble, to be agile, to get it right. And some of the quotes that people were saying, I think, are also very illustrative. It's not all negative, as I said. Businesses and entrepreneurs create our future. There's a recognition that we do not have a future without business. There's also a recognition that the uncertainty and volatility is actually harming the discussions that we're trying to have together. And actually, moving on from that, is actually the view that we need to work collaboratively with each other to find the solutions. Business drives innovation and progress from a member of the public. 
again from the member of the public, I strongly support local businesses. And finally, the last one, which I think is also very interesting, from a member of the public. Business can be a beacon of opportunity for every human on this planet when we get it right, when we listen. So bringing this together, is business a force for good? What we saw is actually there is, by, by and large, there is that benefit there. People say, yes, it's actually business is going to get us through this and out of this. And coming back again to this issue of re-engineering our future, we can only do it through engineering, through innovation, through working together, through doing partnerships uh, to work our way through. There's a very good quote. I don't know if you've seen um, Lord Brown, the former chief executive of British Petroleum. He's got a book called Think, Make, Imagine. And in that, he said, engineering, engineering plays a central role in civilization, always has, always will, which leads us seamlessly to our very first speaker and our first session this afternoon with Sir John Parker, whom I'm delighted to invite on stage with Jonathan Harper, who is the global partner at Spencer Stewart. Just by way of brief introduction, and we won't go through everyone's biography because you have it in the program in front of you, um, but just to give you just a brief transition, um, Sir John clearly is one of Britain's most senior industrialists with a 50-year history of working for some of Britain's largest uh, firms, and largest and best firms. And it's actually from that deep history and that deep knowledge and experience that Sir John wrote a book called The View from the Bridge. And he reflected on his past as a leader. And he said the one constant was actually the need to lead and adapt to continuous change. And he said, today's status quo is never an option for tomorrow. With the deep belief in the power of communication and the importance of culture, which comes through every chapter in the book, he bases his love of engineering on its requirement for clarity of thought, precision, and readiness to experiment and break new ground. Exactly what we need for our better tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sir John and Jonathan on stage.